Here's Chris Roth from Action 2 Sports, brought to you by the Orthopedic and Sports Institute of the Fox Valley, the recovery in for hips and knees. How you doing, everybody? It is official. Sam Shields and Eddie Lacy will not be coming back this season to help the Packers, and it's possible neither one will ever be back with the team. Lacy has been on injured reserve since October 20th due to ankle surgery, and the medical reports not encouraging enough for the Packers to hold out hope he would return. Coach McCarthy thought Lacy was having his best year when he got hurt. He does become an unrestricted free agent after the season. Sam Shields has been out since suffering that concussion back in week one, his second concussion in nine months. Now, the history of his concussions makes it very unlikely the Packers are going to bring him back for the final year of his contract at $8 million that he may have to consider retiring. Well, despite the potentially downer news today, there was no sense of self-pity around the locker room today. The team is well aware of the hole they are in, but also well aware that their coach believes they can crawl out of it. So we're just going to keep stoking that fire and, and we're going to do everything that we need to do this week and prepare to go beat Philadelphia in Philadelphia. It was such a positive person this, this, uh, this morning in, in the team meeting that um, it was uplifting and he, he has been like that. He's a great leader um, for our team and, and he's doing a great job encouraging us. He's looked out for us. It has a lot to do with our success individually and as a team and he's been doing it around here for a long time. So, um, you know, we're right there with him just like he is with us. Well, that kumbaya feeling is one thing. The bad standing, however, is another. The Packers are assured of being at least two games behind the NFC North leader, even if they win in Philly Monday night, presuming tomorrow's Lions-Vikings game doesn't end in a tie. Two games back with just five to go probably makes all five must-win games. I feel like we can run the table. I really do. I think uh, the offense is starting to click a little bit more. We just got to put together a game where we're consistent from the first snap to the last. We've been, uh, I think, getting close to that. We've really been clicking at times in the last few games, but I just feel like it just takes one. We get one under our belts, things might start rolling for us, and we can run the table. All right, we'll see. Badgers taking on number four North Carolina tonight. Championship game of the Maui Invitational. And a cold start for the Badgers. Fall behind 8 0 when Tony Bradley hits the jump hook. In fact, it took over seven minutes to get a bucket. Demetrius Trice with the triple to put the Badgers on the board. Now, Nigel Hayes really struggling with his shot this season, but that's high percentage right there. Badgers, however, down 29 20 at the half. And North Carolina threatening to run away in the second half. Kennedy Meeks, he's strong. 15 points, 16 boards right now. And Carolina leads it in the second half, 56 to 30, excuse me, 54-36. All right, Brewers GM David Stearns expects this offseason to be much quieter than last year when he overhauled the Milwaukee's 40-man roster. However, the elephant in the room remains. Will Ryan Braun still be a Brewer when spring training opens? Braun was nearly traded to the Dodgers over the summer. Both he and Stearns were at a food drive at Miller Park today. Obviously, things come up. It's a part of the business. It's a part of the profession. And, and if something were to happen, then uh, we'd figure it out when we got there. I'm very happy that, that Ryan's a member of the Milwaukee Brewers. I expect him to be a member of the Milwaukee Brewers going forward, and I'm happy that he's here at the event today. Time for another big buck, and it comes from Sam Barkowski. That is an eight-pointer there, harvested in Belle Plaine. Sean o, congrats, Sam. You can send your big buck photos and some information so we can do the bragging for you. Big buck, WBAY. Dot com. Boy, I bet he could handle it himself if he needed to, but we'll just give a little boost. Yeah. Well, you know, we can reach more people. <laughs> In a hurry. Thanks, guys. <laughs> we'll be back. Here's Chris Roth from Action 2 Sports, brought to you by the Orthopedic and Sports Institute of the Fox Valley, the recovery in for hips and knees. Hey, coach, we going dancing. <laughs> Well, Jordan Faust said Link Darner told him one, on day one that he would get both Faust and fellow senior at Carrington Love to their first NCAA tournament. He does just that thanks to the 78-69 win over Wright State in the Horizon League Championship game tonight in Detroit. First trip for the Phoenix to the NCAA tournament 20 years. The last time they were there was after the 95-96 season. Mike Heideman, a first-year head coach. 20 years later, it's first-year head coach Link Darner leading the way. Let's go back to Detroit where Dave Schrader has more with the Horizon League Tournament champions. The Phoenix play perhaps their most complete game of the season to completely shock the Horizon League. They won four games in four days to earn the automatic tourney berth. And that RP40 style, that relentless pressure for 40 minutes, worked to perfection in the title game. They grabbed the lead early with a 13-0 run, and they never looked back, leading by double digits most of the way. Green Bay trailed for only 17 seconds in the entire game against Wright State. 
we, we talked about it all year. Let's get to the last five games and see what happens. And even though Valpo beat us, I thought we played extremely well. And we came into the tournament. I said, let's go in there as one of the hottest teams. And nobody will probably want to play if you get by that first round game. I mean, Coach John preached the whole year that we got to be playing our best basketball right now, and we are. So, uh, I mean, hats off to the coaching staff and us for uh, getting ready and having the, or having the coaches get us ready. So uh, we'll be ready for that first round game. It feels deserved. And uh, all the hard work and then the people who doubted us to say we're supposed to only win 11 games. It just feels so much better. We had a tough schedule and we came through. What's it mean to do it the, the hard way? Four wins in four days. Uh, we took it one game at a time, one half. In the beginning of the game, we said 40 minutes. At half, we said 20 more minutes, and we said that every single game, we took it a half at a time. You're not done yet. You've won eight of nine. You feel confident, right? Feel confident. Um, hopefully, you go into a tournament and you can do some big things, hopefully. You know, it's refreshing to see how happy the guys are, you know, with winning, how much it meant to them to win this. I know it meant a lot to Carrington and Jordan and the other guys, but, you know, just, just through all the hard work that they've put in and time and, and believing in a new coach and a new system that's completely different than anything they've ever seen. As the team marches on into the madness, they get their first tourney berth in 20 years. Now they just get to wait to celebrate again Sunday when they find where they go and who they play. In Detroit, Dave Schrader, Action 2 Sports. All right, thanks, Dave. And again, that tournament assignment comes Sunday. ESPN's Bracketology earlier today had Wright State winning the game and being a 16 seed facing top seed Virginia. Now, if the Phoenix finds themselves in that spot, it means a reunion with the program's all-time leading scorer, Tony Bennett, now the head coach at Virginia. The Phoenix women won their 18th consecutive regular season Horizon League title this year, but for a third year in a row, they do not have a first-team all-conference performer in the eyes of voters. Senior Kaylee Lucan was named Defensive Player of the Year. She and Marin Crocker named to the second team. Jessica Lindstrom joins Lucan on the all-defensive team. Green Bay opens tournament play in the Horizon League on Saturday at the Crest in the semifinals. ESPN's Adam Schefter reporting that the Packers are interested in former Bears running back Matt Forte, a marriage that has been talked about since Chicago decided to part ways with the 30-year-old. Forte did miss three games last year, which is five in his previous seven seasons with the Bears. The free agent signing period begins tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Ted Thompson did spend some money today, though he re-signed restricted free agent guard Lane Taylor to a two-year deal reportedly worth a little over $4,600,000 up front in a signing bonus. The fourth year pro entered the league as an undrafted free agent. Started the only two games of his career last year, but he gives the Packers depth at a position that could be pretty thin in 2017 when TJ Lang and Josh Sitton will be unrestricted free agents. Thompson also keeping a key member of the special teams, Chris Banjo, given an exclusive rights deal today. Banjo led the Packers with 21 special teams tackles this last year. But tonight's the Phoenix mm -hmm. night. Tonight's the Phoenix night. Tomorrow, a lot of millionaires. <laughs> well, I'm not sure around here, but there will be Somewhere. a lot. Yeah. Thanks. Here's Chris Roth from Action 2 Sports, brought to you by the Orthopedic and Sports Institute of the Fox Valley, the recovery in for hips and knees. How are you doing, everybody? The road to lacrosse and the WIA State track meet begins today, continues Thursday this week. Regionals and sectionals today and Thursday, respectively. Ahead is a grueling week, but with big rewards. Division one regional at Kimberly High School tonight. Top four in each advance, each event rather, advance to the Bayport sectional on Thursday. Girls mile run, Kimberly's Carissa Weyenberg. She's going to take the tape, 5 minutes, 34 seconds. She also picked up the two-miler today. Hortonville's Cody Lorenz wins by eight-tenths of a second at 22.43. In that dash, he also won the 400-meter dash. He was part of the Polar Bears' first place 4x8 relay team. Big day for the DePier pole vaulters again. All three competitors advanced to sectionals. Kylie Switchiktowski clearing 12 feet for first place. In the boys' 100, the left side of your screen, that's Appleton North. Bo Babich just barely wins by a tenth of a second. He was also part of the Lightning's first place 4x2 relay. And in the shot put, dominated by the Kimberly throwers on the boys' side. That is Boyd Dietzen winning at a 58 feet, three inches. All three of the makers' throwers advance to sectionals. Kimberly takes the overall boys' and girls' regional titles tonight. For all the results, go to our website, WBAY.com. Battle for the top spot in the FBA this afternoon. Softball Diamond, Kakana hosting Oshkosh North. Goes up 1-0 early after a Spartans error. The rest of the ball game, uh, it's a arms race. Haley Hestekin. Heskinton, rather, with one of her six strikeouts, still one nothing. But North pitcher Sydney Supple also dealing. She gets out of the jam there in the sixth. She had six Ks in the seventh. Last chance for the Spartans. Libby Nevue with a hit to left. 
but it's not enough to get that tie and run home. They have to hold the runner at third. Base is loaded, two outs, and the easy play at first for Kakana, and they get the win. one nothing. The final. Well, the Packers turning their attention to organized team activities this week. Three weeks of OTAs, then it's the mandatory mini camp in mid June before that long summer break prior to training camp. The Packers will be on the Radnitschke field tomorrow at 11 30. You can go watch weather permitting. LeBron and the Cavs trying to rebound from their first playoff loss. Game four tonight in Toronto Raptors. A big second quarter off the turnover here. Easy deuce as they outscore the Cavs 30 to 17 and lead it by 16 at the break. Cleveland came back to take the lead, but thanks in part to 35 from Kyle Lowry. Raptors come back and win at 105 99 series now tied at two games apiece. And the NBA also announcing today that the Warriors Draymond Green will not be suspended for his um, kick to the groin of OKC Stephen Adams last night. The league believing Green that his kick was unintentional. It was, however, upgraded to a flagrant two foul. So if Green gets another flagrant foul, he will automatically be suspended for a game. And game five for the Sharks and Blues in St. Louis tonight. Big night for Plover, Wisconsin native and former Badger Joe Pavelski. Late in the second, off the power play, one times at the tie of the game at three. And then 16 seconds into the third period, he's going to score off the deflection. That's oh. impressive. Puts the Sharks up for good. They had a couple of empty netters. 6-3 the final. They can advance to the Stanley Cup finals with a win Wednesday in San Jose. We'll be right back.